Hello, my name is Tom Palmer and I am a children's author and this is a short um, 10 to 15 minute video about how to base a story on a true historical event, which is quite what I do. I write stories often based on real things that happen in history and I have a very particular way of doing it and I thought for schools um, and libraries in Neathport Tolba I could share that with you. So, first of all, So, when I write a story, what I do is I ask myself six questions, especially if I'm basing it on something real that I know happened in the past. So, I will write story in the middle. And I, this is what I do when I'm writing a story. And I ask six questions. So, I do a spider diagram asking myself, six questions and there are six words well there's probably more but there are six words um, that you can start questions with they are where and you can talk along with me if you want can you read the red the red's a bit rubbish isn't it i'm going to do it all in black sorry and red's normally such a strong color isn't it where when who how, why, and it's another one. Where, who, how, why, what? Right. Now that I've reminded myself. So, those are the six words I can use to base my story on. And this is what I do. And what I thought I'd do is, I thought I'd go through like how I worked out one of my books using this technique. D-Day Dog is about a true story about a dog. Um, in fact, I can show you a picture of him. He was called Glenn. And that's Glenn the dog. And his handler is Emile. That's the guy that he's with. Um, and they parachuted into the Second World War on D-Day, um, which was a battle towards the end of the Second World War. And they helped defeat the Nazis and liberate Europe from Nazi occupation. And it was a massively important battle in the history of the world um, and they took part in it. This parachuting dog took part in one of the most important days of war in the world and it was it was a battle for good, it was a battle to get rid of the, the hideous Nazi, German Nazi regime of the 1930s and 1940s. Um, lots of wars, are, it's very difficult to, to say what the rights and wrongs of them are, but for me, the Second World War and getting rid of the Nazi occupiers um, was a just war, but that's that's my opinion. Yeah, you can discuss that if you want to. So, um, now, so I've, I've got these six questions. I found out about someone from history, a dog called Glenn. Now I just have to answer these questions and that will help me overcome the fear of the blank page. Writers face the fear of the blank page. Writers, even well-known writers, not like me, or, or well-published writers like me, because I've written a few books, we, we face the blank page every day. And it's not easy looking at a blank page, but a plan and a strategy like this is a way of overcoming it. So let's start to try to answer some of these questions. Who? Who is this story about? Let's start with the person, or in this case, the animal. We've got Glenn. Glenn is a dog and he is, he's an Alsatian, but I won't put that. I'll just put Glenn the dog for now. So you've got Glenn the dog. We know his handler was called Emile. So we'll have Emile as well because they were, they always went around together when they jumped out of aeroplanes. Glenn used to jump first. Um, and he loved it. He enjoyed jumping out of aeroplanes when there wasn't a war on. Things changed later on. Um, and Emil went after him and Glenn had a little red light on his back. Um, and Emil, the, the guy, would follow him down and then they would, they would be reunited um, on the ground. They, dogs didn't have to open their own parachutes if you're worrying about that. When they jumped out of the aeroplane in these sort of drops, the men and the dogs' parachutes opened automatically when the strap from the aeroplane sort of um, went taut that opened the parachute automatically. Um, so that's just, just for your information, if you're worried about that. So we've got the who. 
when. So we know, we know the day of D-Day. D-Day, and you can do this for any historical event, any historical person. You can, this is how you can put a story together. D-Day was on the 6th of June, 1944. So can you see how, by using this structure of who, when, what, why, etc., you can start to, um, you can start to build a story just using this as a framework, it's kind of an easy way to do it. I use it because it stops me panicking, thinking, what am I going to write? What am I going to write? Right. So where? Now, we know that D-Day, if you look D-Day up, um, D-Day happened over Normandy in France. So Normandy, um, which I think Normandy has got quite big relations in the history with South Wales, like your area. I think there's a lot of trade between Normandy, probably war as well, usually. Um, Normandy in France, so which is sort of beaches and stuff like that. So we've already we've already worked that out. We know the when, the where, and the who. So we've done that. Now we've got to answer the what, the why, and the how. Um, and this, so the kind of I suppose the who is your characters in your story. We've got two characters: Glenn the dog, Emil the human. Right. So we've got the who. That's your characters. The where and the when, that's your setting. So that's your setting. But is it, thinking about it, you must always check yourself, I suppose. Thinking about it, they're not in Normandy, France immediately. They're in the sky on a parachute. Oh, look, there's a picture of a dog there. And they're in the sky on a parachute. And that is important to remember as well, because that could be um, that could be the, the where as well, like hang up in the sky. So what we need to know is what happened why did it happen and how did it happen right so this is where you have to do a bit more reading into history so the what happened was um on the day like as i've said glenn who we've met already loved jumping out of airplanes but he didn't fancy it on the day of the war because on the day of the war there was a lot of bombs going off but also the men were really nervous and dogs, if you've got a dog, you know, the dogs know when you're nervous and the dog got nervous. So the dog decided he didn't want to jump. So let's put this. So what happens? The dog didn't jump. So the dog decided he didn't want to jump out of the airplane, which is a problem, isn't it? Because um, if the dog doesn't jump, you need the dog there. The dog was useful. Glenn was really useful in the battle because he was used to sniff out bombs that were underground called mines that would stop the soldiers being blown up and he would sniff them out before anyone, including him, trod on them. So didn't jump. Um, so that's a problem. Why didn't he jump? Because as I've said, like he was scared. No, I'm not going to put that. I'm going to put, and it's good to question yourself all the time while you're doing this. Why didn't he jump? Um, because he could feel the humans, that's apostrophe there, fear. So, because he could sense, or maybe sense is a better word, isn't it? Sense the humans' fear. You could even have it from his point of view, couldn't we? That would be quite interesting because. Can you think of any books that are from an animal's point of view? I think War Horse is, isn't it? And there's that one, there's that one by E.B. White as well, isn't there? Um, Charlotte's Web, I think that's from the point of view of an animal too. Anyway, we could try that, couldn't we? Um, so we've got the what, he didn't jump because he could sense human's fear. How did things end up? Um, well, am I... <laughs> It's a bit depressing, that bit, but I suppose I've got to tell you. So in the end, it's not that depressing initially. Um, in the end, like Emil, his handler, we've got to put it in because it's true. Emil chucked him out of the plane. So Emil, the human, threw the, threw the dog out of the plane with his parachute on. He wasn't just throwing him to, to his death. So... There you've got it. So we've answered all those questions. So we found out about something from history and we've answered those questions. Now, the question is, is there enough there for us to write a story? And we'll go through it now and see if we've got enough to write a story. We've got Glenn and Emil. That's our characters. Normandy, France, 6th of June, 1944. 
that's our setting. Or actually in the sky above, that's supposed to be an aeroplane, in the sky above um, above France, so it's dark and there's all sorts going on. So that's our setting. What happens is, so, so Glenn is a parachuting dog, or a para dog, which is also known as, and it doesn't jump. So that's, that's the first what happens, that's the first event of it. But you've got to know in a story, you've got to know why people do something. Why do people do, or animals do things? Um, and you kind of need to know, and that's called their motivation. So why does someone do something? Um, Emil wanted to, wanted to become a, a paratrooper because he was half French, half English, and he wanted to liberate France um, because France was occupied by the Germans. So he was motivated. His why was that. The dog's why. Why, why, I think, why did the dog want to jump out of an aeroplane? Probably because of his loyalty towards his human. So let's put that as well. Because he loves, dogs love humans, don't they? Or nice ones. And um, he'll have been loyal to him. And, but yet, when it came to it, he sensed the human's fear and he didn't want to jump because he realised it was dangerous. Not because he thought it was dangerous, because he could feel the fear coming off the humans. Um, and then it finishes. So the event finishes with O'Neill throwing the dog out. So where would you start? So what I would do now is, having done that thing, I would now put here, I would start to put a plan. So I'd do stuff like, I'd say, um, in a plane, dog and man about to jump, about to jump, noise, dark, fear. So we've got that, haven't we? We've sort of worked that out. Noise, dark, fear, dog refuses, looks into the eyes, this isn't actually what happened in my book in the end. I could, I could do this as another story. Looks into eyes of man. And then you know the rest. He gets chucked out of the plane. And how does he feel? That for me, like my story isn't like that. My story is from the point of view of, um, of a boy who finds out about Glenn and Emil. But this story, I quite fancy writing this. Because you might say, what we've done from this, by asking those questions, who, what, when, where, why, who, where, those um we've got a situation now where we've got um a dog in the plane him and the man are about to jump the dog's ready but then there's noise there's darkness there's fear and the dog refuses because he can see in emil the man's eyes his fear what happens next and that could be a story and he loves his master his master looks into his eyes and he knows his master's afraid then his master chucks him out of the plane then his master jumps out after him then what happens so then you could take the story further and they're going down how's the dog feeling is he resentful of what the man did or does he understand or is he so loyal to the man that he'll do anything for him they're the things you can explore in the story but what i suppose what i wanted to tell you this for was i wanted to show you that that is is how i write a story story i just ask myself six simple questions and then try and make sense of how something from history, something that I know about, that I've read about, that I've seen a film about, that I've found out about, I can turn into a story that I can write. That is how I go about writing a story. And in the next video I'm going to do for, um, for Neathport Talbot Schools and Libraries, and we're gonna do the um, editing. Um, so we're gonna start, I think what we'll do is we'll start this story. If you want to watch the other video, we might start it. So I'll keep this thing. I'll erase this bit and we'll see how we go. Thank you for listening. I hope that was useful in helping you plan a story um, from a historical fact. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.